In Module 1, we covered the general rules for indefinite integrals and definite integrals. In the remainder of this lecture, we'll look at how to solve particular types of integration. In this module, we'll deal with integration by parts. In the next module, we'll look at integration by substitution. And then we'll look at some economic applications of integration. Integration by parts is based on reversing the product rule from differentiation. Recall the product rule from Lecture 4. The derivative of a product uv is equal to u times v prime plus v times u prime. Putting that in terms of our functional notation, the derivative of the product f of x times g of x is equal to f prime x times gx plus f of x times g prime x. The derivative is the antiderivative. It reverses derivation. So we can integrate both sides there. On the left-hand side, of course, we'll just have f of x times g of x. On the right-hand side, we apply the sum rule and have these two integrals. We can rearrange that, and we get our formula for integration by parts. We can see on the left we have a product as the integrand, and also on the right we have another product as integrand. Why do we do that? The objective in applying integration by parts is to transform an integration that's difficult. So here we have something difficult into something that's easy, or at least easier. We consider one of the terms in the product as a derivative. That should be something easy to integrate in itself. Perhaps it might be x, so we would have a half x squared as the integral. And then over here, this new product should be much easier to integrate than the one we started with. We have two terms in the product, so sometimes it's a matter of trial and error to see which combination gives us the best result. We'll see how that works in example 7. I think the best way to understand this formula is to work through some examples. So let's work through these two examples. After that, come back and have a look at that integration by parts formula again and try to understand the intuition behind it. In example 6, we'll use integration by parts using this formula. We have a definite integral. So we're evaluating the integral from 1 to e. We'll do it in two stages. First, we'll find the indefinite integral. Remember that the purpose of using integration by parts is to end up with a simpler integrand here than we originally had here. So we're looking at our product and thinking about one being fx and the other being g prime x, the first derivative. And with that in mind, finding an integrand f prime x times gx. In this case, one of the terms in the integrand is log x. The first derivative of log x is 1 on x, so that should make things simpler. We can rearrange our integrand into the form above, so that will equal the integral of log x x squared dx. So we'll let fx equal log x. That implies that f prime x is equal to 1 on x, and we'll let g prime x equal x squared. We can use our inverse power rule to find gx. That implies gx is equal to 1 third x cubed. So now we have fx and f prime x, g prime x and gx. Substituting the values we just found into the formula, we'll have fx times gx, that'll be log x times one third x cubed, minus the integral of f prime x, that'll be one on x, times gx, well, that was one third x cubed again, a dx. We can rearrange and simplify We'll have one third x cubed log x minus, we take the one third outside the integral and then cancel through the x, so it'll be x squared dx. We've achieved our objective. This integrand is much simpler than this one. Let's carry on. That will equal one third x cubed log x minus one third times, well, one third x cubed plus c. We can simplify that a little bit more. We'll have one third x cubed 
times log x minus one third plus c. Now let's look at the definite integral. To evaluate the definite integral, we start with the indefinite integral without the c, and we evaluate over the limits of integration. That's from 1 to e. Remember, e is just another number. So we'll evaluate our function for x equals e, and we'll subtract the value of the function for x equals 1. That'll be 1 third e cubed times log e minus 1 third Put a big bracket around that, minus one third one cubed, bracket log of one minus one third, bracket, another big bracket there. That's one third e cubed, log of e is one, minus one third e cubed times one third minus well one third times one cubed is one third times the log of one the log of one is zero so it'll be one third one times zero a minus minus that'll be plus one ninth so we have one third e cubed minus one ninth e cubed, well that'll be two ninths e cubed plus one ninth. Or we could simplify that as two times e cubed plus one over nine. In example seven we have an indefinite integral made up of three terms, three x and e to the four x. To start with, we can simplify that a bit by taking the 3 outside of the integral. In this problem, we apply integration by parts with the following formula. What we do when we apply this formula is, instead of having a fairly complicated integrand here, here we're looking for something simpler. The order of our terms in the product are arbitrary, so we need to choose which term will be f of x and which term will be g prime x. Let's try this one to start. We'll try f of x is equal to e to the 4x and g prime x is equal to x. This implies that f prime x differentiating with respect to x will be, well we should know that's 4e uh, to the 4x. And we can integrate that quite simply using our reverse power rule. So that will be uh, g of x will equal one half x squared. If we have f prime x equal to four e to the four x and gx equal to a half x squared, substituting in there, is that simpler than x times e to the four x as an integrand? Probably not. So let's try the other combination. This time we'll have uh, fx is equal to x and g prime x is equal to e to the 4x. Well, that implies that f prime x is equal to 1 and g of x is equal to 1 quarter e to the 4x. In this case if we have f prime x equal 1 and g of x equal to a quarter e to the 4x that gives us a quarter e to the 4x is our new integrand. That's much easier to deal with than x times e to the 4x. We reject that combination and go with this one. Working with fx equaled x and g prime x equals e to the 4x, we can substitute into our formula. That will equal three times with a big bracket. f times gx, well, that will be x times a quarter e to the 4x minus the integral of f prime x, well that'd be 1 times g of x, g of x was 1 quarter e to the 4x, and then dx, close the big bracket, it's 
equal to 3 times a quarter x e to the 4x minus, we can take that quarter outside the integral, e to the 4x dx, close bracket. We have one quarter there in, in both terms, so we can make that 3 on 4, x times e to the 4x minus, well the integral of e to the 4x we found before was 1 quarter e to the 4x plus c. We can simplify that a little further, so we'll have 3 quarters e to the 4x times x minus 1 quarter plus c.